Welcome back to 8701. So in this lecture, I'd like you um, to have a first connection between particle physics and the Lagrangian formalism. In classical mechanics, you have seen that you can uh, write down a Lagrangian uh, using the kinetic and the potential energy of a particle and uh, from that derive equations of motions. In quantum field theory, um, you can translate this idea um, and derive Lagrangian densities. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this class to, you know, do all the mechanics of this. We revisit this topic uh, later um, in the class when we introduce the Higgs mechanism, for example, and I'll be a little bit more uh, systematic then. Um, I'm introducing the topic now because it allows you to answer one of the homework questions. So you can just follow this lecture and then you should be able to answer, um, you know, the first question of the second preset. All right, um, so you just have to trust me at this point that you can write a Lagrangian for free Dirac field or Lagrangian density for free Dirac field this way. Um, one exercise would be to use this and show that this is from this Lagrangian, you can derive the Dirac equation for a uh, spinor field. But that's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to see what the effect is of um, having this Lagrange density being invariant or unchanged under global symmetry. So we are able to uh, rotate our spinor field um, with a global phase and we will see that the Lagrangian doesn't change and that the consequence of this, which is the free current. This is exercising uh, Noether's theory. There is an overarching global symmetry and out of the symmetry follows a conserved property. In this case, the current. All right, so um, we can express the symmetry with infin infinitesimal um, phase transformation as shown here for our fields and for our adjunct fields. Um, for the fields and the derivatives, then we just you know, have to do the math and we find you know, those expressions, which we can then put back into our Lagrangian. First of all, we, we write the, um, the change of our Lagrangian um, in this way, and as we just have seen, the Lagrangian is invariant under this um, this transformation, and therefore the change is, is going to be zero. So then we use this information at this in the equations. We find this very, very complicated looking set of equations. Okay, so now we get this, um, <clears throat> and then we can rewrite the terms. Um, so this is already with a vision of what we would like to actually. I'll find later. So if we um, if we um, now look at the terms uh, involving the derivative with respect to a demu um, demu of our spinor spinor, um, we can express these equations as as shown here. And with that, we find the next equation. Um, I only show this for the for the for the spinor, not for the jump spinor, this looks exactly the same. What you however find in this part here, this looks like Euler-Lagrange equation and this part needs to be zero. So we only have to worry about this part of the equation and the same for the adjunct field. So this then leaves this equation here where we have I epsilon derivative of this part of the equation. And something like this you have seen before in our continuity equation, something like this um, is our continuity equation. We discussed this in one of the last visitation session, which leads us then to um, conserved currents. And let's go one step further. If we now identify this part as our, uh, our, our current, we can, um, we can then use the partial derivatives um, of our initial Lagrangian you know, we're just calculating those terms here. And we find that our current, our conserved current is given by the adjunct spinor gamma mu spinor. And so what we have just seen, and this is conserved, so the derivative is zero, um, has seen that we have a Lagrangian density, we have a global symmetry, and out of that, we find that the, the current is conserved. So this is all I wanted to show here in the homework set now. We start from a different Lagrangian 
So this is the Lagrangian for a massive spin half particle, um, which satisfies the Dirac equation. In the homework, we are looking at um, a scalar particle, a massive scalar particle, and the exercise, however, is, is very much the same.